Hey guys, Willard D, we're back for a new Let's Play, and no, it is not Kirby Superstar, but Kirby Superstar Ultra. There are a couple reasons why I'm playing this game over the original, one being that it is incredibly difficult to get two or more people together to actually play this game, because you need not only your own cartridge, but uh, it's just the whole complications with DS wireless gameplay action. Honestly, Nintendo, you really need to invest in maybe some online play. The second reason is that this game has a crap load more content than the actual original game, because they really wanted to make sure you guys were getting a good product for the money you would be shelling out for it. I think it is $29.99 is still probably around that price, because this game is definitely one of the most iconic Kirby games in the entire series, mainly due to the fact that what it did was something very different. So let's dive right into this remake of a game. Which funny thing is, is that there is another remake within this game. Now the thing I wanted to really do with this game is to not only show off the differences, but also do some challenges with it, basically. So that's why I want to do some challenges specific to the game I'm playing, as well as challenges that are pretty much going to be coming again and again. Like, for instance, Spring Breeze, I'm going to be playing it like it was originally played back in, with Kirby's Dreamland, without any copy abilities. Also, you probably noticed that there are three sub-games, or mini-games in this case, which honestly are kind of lame compared to, say, MRI Kirby and freaking Megaton Punch. We will not be playing these because they are literally just something. I don't know. You also have theater mode, which is something new because we have now little movies that we can watch, which are pretty nice, honestly. And options because you might want to destroy your data or watch the beginner show. God help you if you do. Anyway, let's start off with Spring Breeze and possibly the easiest Kirby experience in any game ever made. Now, Spring Breeze, as I said before, is a remake of Kirby's Dreamland. And the reason why I'm doing a no copy ability is to show off a couple things about this game that really kind of uh, make it different from other series or other games in the series, basically. Button, man. All right, Kirby, let's get this thing rolling. And yes, the game's still gonna ask, uh, do you want tutorial stuff? Hell no. Hell no. Oh my god, they actually threw him in the game this time. I remember in the original, they kind of just gave me this half-assed tutorial. Here, they're actually giving me some credit for not wanting to learn more about it. <clears throat> now, the thing about... I'm not going to talk more about this particular mode, other than the fact that this is pretty much Kirby's Dreamland a bridge. Like, there's less levels, there are very easy bosses, and literally the HP system that this game has compared to the usual <clears throat> bars of life make this game even easier than it was in the original. Like, seriously, you just take a look. Hey, sup, it's you! Oh my god, you almost have no health. <clears throat> so yeah, the HP system basically gives all enemies and bosses different variances in HP. And as a result, some enemies are even easier, while other enemies are actually a little bit more hardy. And Kirby also applies to the system too, so... Attacks will actually do a variance amount of damage. So they could possibly do half his bar of in health, or it could do like a small sliver. It just depends on the attack that he gets smacked around with. So that's one nice change to this system that really adds a new element to the Kirby series, because all the K Kirby games before this basically just stuck to number of hits you can take before dying. Same with the bosses. He and pretty much all the enemies would take just one hit before dying. Wispy Woods, unfortunately, has gotten incredibly destroyed by this logic, because just watch how easy... Oh, you little damn apple, how did you get in the damn way there? But yeah, as you can see, Wispy Woods is pretty fucked right now. In fact, he's already dead. Wow, he didn't even have a chance to blow out some smoke here, it's that bad. <clears throat> but 
why would a tree be smoking anyway? Seriously, Wispy Woods, you might need to get that checked out. Longs... Wait, where the fuck is Castle Lolo game? This is what I'm talking about, guys. They got rid of Castle Lolo, and I'm kind of pissed off because of that. Seriously, Castle Lolo is like one of the best stages in the original. Why would you take that away from me, game? Now, another thing that, that can be said about this game that's quite nice is that, uh, well, for anything, this game definitely does a really good job with the copy abilities, but compared, it's just funny how s drastically different the Kirby games are from the original. Every Kirby game lately has focused on copy abilities, copy abilities, copy abilities, and more copy abilities. It's not about Kirby shooting, inhaling stuff, and shooting stuff out. They pretty much... Oh, you piece of shit. You know what? Revenge. Yes, suck it. So yeah, Kirby's, of course, still has the invincibility candy, and of course, still makes them really fucking fast. I mean, they can get rid of that element. Excuse me. And see you later, buddy. Don't leave a mess. Other than that, though, it's just so amazing how this game has evolved from just simple inhaling. Aw, oh, man, really? You're gonna put Float Islands with these guys as the bosses? It just it doesn't work. Castle Lolobo needs to be in his own frickin' castle, not in this frickin' uh, summer view or summer resort of a uh, home here. And as you can expect, they are also really fucking easy. Man, Kirby, it's like you're a freaking mass murderer today. Everything that's got in your way, you've horribly destroyed. Hey, Bubbly Callouts, I'm kind of glad to see that this stage is still in this game, and probably still has most of the elements that made it quite an interesting treat. Even the freaking cannons and their invincibility frames out the ass, because they are all invincible. They, you cannot destroy cannons. The only thing you can do is hopefully make them fall off screen, because uh, Kirby games usually like to put those guys in really such bad situations where you can knock them off the screen, usually by hitting a switch or blowing up a bomb block. And here's Krakow Jr. What's up, buddy? Oh my god, what the f... Okay, Krakow, you need to really work out, buddy. I mean, seriously, your bar is all but gone. And you're dead. So yeah, there's more indication of the HP system. Granted, I kind of like the fact that enemies can take more than one hit every which way, but it, when it becomes the point where enemy bosses become really stupid, sad, easy, I start to question the uh, whole mechanics a bit. Granted, I'm sure they're just doing it because this mode is incredibly easy. Also, if you want that, be sure to grab it, because maximum tomatoes. Great health. I feel bad for that guy that committed suicide. That was not cool. And I'm pretty sure you guys haven't forgotten about the cow jumping over the moon, and that there's a secret exit there. Just make sure to slowly fall down and stay to the right, right around here, because that extra life, even though you probably have about all the lives in the world to beat this thing, and then some, you might need it for this actual challenge at the bottom. <gasps> it's a mini-boss! Bunkers, how you doing? You're actually taking more than... You're actually going to take more than two hits! I'm so fucking happy you exist here, buddy. So yeah, Bonkers might actually be the most threatening mini-boss in the entire first sub-game that we play. He actually is taking three hits right now. I'm a little impressed. This is actually more than a boss right now. Dead. I'm sorry, I can't use your power. Maybe next time. Hey, it's Krako! Stop, buddy. Now, as you can imagine, Krako is... No, is gonna be another pushover, but how much of a pushover is he? He actually has three attacks. Oh my god, I just... Okay, this HP system is really fucking with my head. Bosses actually dying faster than many bosses seems a little wrong. So as you can see, when you take down half his health, he becomes a little bit more aggressive, and this is probably his worst attack. Unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to actually hit me with it. I don't know what to say. Next. 
So now that we've pretty much blown through the first three bosses and pretty much the almost entirety of this game, we have one last stage. Mount Diddy. And of course, you gotta fight King Deeds. That guy's pretty awesome. I love King Diddy. Now, does he have a boss for us attached to it? Because it would actually make this game a little bit longer. But honestly, I kind of wish it isn't there. Because all the bosses have been like super pushovers. And fortunately, King Diddy is pretty much the same way. If anything you should know, if you had copy abilities for this guy, he would be a joke because, he, as you saw, he flinches when you hit him. And he would be flinching all the time if you hit him with a rapid fire ability. Wow, did you actually take three hits? Okay, I'm done with this. I'm done with this sub game. I, I haven't been more a little disappointed with difficulty until today. That wasn't a challenge, honestly. That was more of a different way of playing this game. Uh, okay. Enjoy the ending. That is to Kirby's Dreamland slash Spring Breeze. Oh god, and they abridged the hell out of this too. Now you can't even read who made this thing. I might want to appreciate these people, game. I mean... You know what? Never mind. They, they made this game too easy. I don't appreciate them as much. So, as we wave goodbye to the remake that is Kirby's Dreamland, aka Spring Breeze, we can now move on to a different sub-game. And this sub-game is definitely going to be a little bit harder because I'm going to pose a challenge that's actually going to be challenging. I'm just kind of curious if it will work because uh, I haven't exactly practiced it yet. Oh, Kirby, what are you going to do with that castle once you... Uh, empty all the food out of it. Those all waddle peas? I remember them all being Kirby's, right? So wait, DDD stole from Waddle Dee's? I thought Waddle Dee's kind of liked... Never mind. So congratulations, once you beat the first sub-game, you get Dyna Blade, K Great Cave Offensive, and Gourmet Race. This is what we're going to be doing next video, and this is what we're going to be doing after this one. But this one we're going to be doing right now, and the challenge here is to lose the first two races, but win overall. And that's going to be very interesting, because that means I'm going to be a glutton for food, or else I will lose. The idea here is that you have to race King DD from start to finish while collecting all the food along the way, and if you win the race, you get 30 points. If you don't, you don't. So I'm going to have to rely heavily on food collection or else I'm going to get my ass kicked. Kirby, I don't know. I don't understand you, buddy. You're hungry, but you're flying up the tallest mountain in the world. Wouldn't you think to have a meal before even trying that? Uh, I kind of prefer the original's intro. Uh, nope. I played this before, and I already explained the rules. Alright, food collection, go! And nice thing about Kirby is that he is a lot smaller, therefore a lot faster. Gonna have to rely on that, because King DD is all about being buff and crap. Alright, good. Thank you! Oh, shit. No! I need that! Yeah, I'm gonna have to really collect this stuff. Ah, fuck. Well, I'm gonna have to lose the next two races now. I can only win one race, guys. Just one. I'm kinda glad I won the easiest race, but I hope it doesn't really skew things. Hey, hey, don't get in front of me. Oh, shit! Oh, no! Oh, God, now he's in the lead, and he's stealing all my food. This is bad. This is really bad. King DDD could start kicking my ass here. Oh, my God, he's kicking my ass. Hey! Oh, God, I totally took the wrong way. Okay, this race is getting ugly fast, and I lost the race. 
Uh, you totally bypassed a freaking Max Tomato. What are you thinking, sir? <sighs> okay, so that was like 67 points for him, and staggering 20 or so for me. And I would suggest you getting uh, Wing Kirby here, because this is probably the best ability for Kirby. Because one thing, Kirby flies much faster horizontally and vertically, and you don't have to charge up anything whatsoever. Also, try to collect all the stray little, uh... Stray, um... Max Tomatoes, because obviously points. Not to mention, Wing Kirby also has a much easier time dealing with the blocks, because that way he can just kind of gladly destroy him with just flapping his wings. Repeatedly. It's really nice. Really handy. Oh god, come on. Oh god, you're getting the lead. Don't like this. Oh shit. Don't be trying to beat me, you bastard. Alright, get in front. Oh no, I lost! Hmm, I wonder if I won overall. This is gonna be really tough. I won. Nope. Oh uh, yeah, just by three fucking points. This just goes to show you, if you eat like frickin' no tomorrow, you will win this race. Granted that you at least win one. Yeah, suck it, King DDD. Gave you a frickin' handicap and you still managed to lose this. Alright guys, well I think this would be a good place to stop next time. Dino Blade is in the mix, and that's gonna be an interesting experience. And then this. Of course we can't forget about those two sub games down there. They're one of my some of my favorites after all. So thanks for watching guys, have a great day and adios.